Hi, I'm Paul Barry. Welcome to Media Bites. And thanks to James Valentine and Jason Whitaker for biting the media while I was away. But first, to poor old Qantas. Qantas sparing the brunt of customer anger over delayed flights, lost baggage, and even passengers forced to sleep on an airport floor. Yes, the flying kangaroo has flown into some flack recently. But last week it found some great news to distract the media. A major aviation milestone overnight with direct flights from Perth to Rome. Yes, the first ever flight. But with no journalists on board to puff it up. So three days later, it took off again. The first non-stop flight from Australia to continental Europe. The first direct flight from Perth to Rome. Qantas has made aviation history tonight. Yes, making history night after night. And all they had to do to get journalists on board was dangle free flights to sunny Rome. Nathan, it sounds like a tough sell. From Rockingham to Rome. Ah, oh, grazie, Jess. Yes, it was gelato and prosecco for lucky reporters. And the best seats in the house. Lucky for me, there's a spare seat at the pointy end of the plane. Lucky indeed. I bet the passengers sleeping on the airport floors back home really enjoyed the overblown airline PR. Did you catch that vicious assault on former New York Mayor Rudy Giuliani? I got hit on the back as if a boulder hit me. It hurt tremendously. I bet. But luckily, Rudy's so tough, he survived, telling a New York radio station. And all of a sudden, I feel a shot on my back, like somebody shot me. Lucky I'm a 78-year-old who's in pretty good shape. Because if I wasn't, I'd have hit the ground and probably cracked my skull. And lucky for us, the CCTV footage to prove how lucky Rudy is to be alive. Um, let's take a look. Hold on, is that it? Let's rewind. Yes, that is the entire assault. What most people would call a pat on the back. And even the Trump sycophants at Newsmax reckoned Rudy was beating it up. I gotta be honest, it doesn't look that bad. Poor Rudy. And what does the current New York mayor reckon? Someone needs to remind uh, former Mayor Giuliani that falsely reporting a, a, a crime is a crime. Now that is a <laughs> slap down. Rupert Murdoch has made headlines this week with news he's divorcing wife number four, supermodel Jerry Hall. Yes, after six years of marriage, Rupert is getting wife number four, Jerry Hall, off of his cloud. And the media are trying to figure out why. It's because she smoked, says the Daily Mail. She likes to smoke and drink, said the Tatler. Or as the Mail offered in a second bite, Jerry Hall was stuck in succession when she wanted to be in Ab Fab. Adding that Rupert wears soft shoes and is getting a little deaf and claiming he dumped her by text. Ooh. Meanwhile, the two people who could tell us the truth are staying mum. As is the Murdoch media. Interesting to note that um, the news wasn't broken in the Murdoch papers. Rupert's New York Post even has its own special divorce page. Yet amid stories about a Fox Sports host and a dead Saudi billionaire, there's not a squeak about you know who. Nor do those salacious British tabloids have much to say. And US showbiz guru Roger Friedman claims a big piece he helped on for a UK Sunday paper was spiked. Why? I guess because editors and journalists don't want Rupert's papers coming after them and maybe hacking their phones. And now to seven to find out, is there anybody out there? Coming up on Weekend Sunrise, preparing for liftoff, the countdown is on for the first rocket launch from our shores in nearly 30 years. Wow, that's a big deal. So, let's hear NASA's rocket man tell Matt and Sally what it's all about. Why has NASA chosen this site in the Northern Territory? Hello, Kevin. Please tell me that we can not send an, a, a rocket 300 kilometres oh. into Earth's orbit, but we, but can't, we can't get, get comms with Kevin link. France. Earth to Kevin, Earth to Kevin. But hold on, Matt's excited. Kev, have we got you? <laughs> Kev? I've got you, I've got you. Oh, beauty, I sold long enough. Yep, lift off at last. But by the time Matt asked the question. Of galaxies and stars, not a big deal. <laughs> Oh no, this is devastating. And Matt had had enough. A little closer to home, the ABC was also having problems. Well, Tom Maddox joins us now from AFL House. Tom, how did the AFL arrive at this decision? Hmm, 
Hmm, ground control to Major Tom. We can't hear you. And Tom, if you've got me there, can you walk us through how the AFL arrived at the decision there today? We'll take that as a no. And we'll be back with Media Watch, 9.15 Monday night on the ABC, also iView and social media. Don't miss it.